everybody for uh, coming to my talk, Color and CSS, Woo! using new spaces, functions, and techniques to make your site shine. Um, a little bit about me before I get started. My name is Aubrey Sambor. I'm a lead engineer at Lullabot. I live up in Northampton, Massachusetts, which is about an hour and a half west of Boston. It's very cold, so I'm happy to be in Florida, where it is where I'm cold wearing a sweatshirt when it's like 65 degrees outside. So I don't know why I'm cold because it's way colder at home. And I've been working with CSS for over 25 years uh, since the late 90s, and I love it. Obviously, I talk about CSS a lot. I talked about it last year, talking about it this year, and. Color is also really interesting because there's so much cool stuff that's going on with it. If you want to follow me online, you can find me at any of these places. Uh, Mastodon, um, for the most part, is where I hang out. I'm on labyrinth.social slash starshaped. I also have a blog, and I have LinkedIn and Drupal.org in case you want to read up more about me there. All right, <clears throat> so here is what I am going to talk about today. I'm first going to give an overview of color spaces that are available today. This will just be a little overview of what you've been able to use with color right now. I'm going to talk about what's new in the CSS color module levels 4 and 5. And I'm going to touch on one thing that's in color module 6, which is like bleeding edge brand new. I'm going to go over a couple CSS color functions and how to use those. I'm going to briefly go over how to use CSS custom properties to change the value of a color item in a color space, but there's also a better way to do this with a color function that I'll be talking about. And then I'll talk about a couple ways to make your site more accessible by using light, dark, and color contrast if I have time. So first, I'm going to talk about the current color spaces that are available today. Again, these ones will probably be familiar to you if you've been doing anything with color um, in CSS in the last... 20 years or so. And for, But before I do that, I'm going to briefly go over what a color gamut is. And this is where I am hoping that this projector is newer than it, I think it is, um, because there are, new, there are new gamuts, like a wide gamut that I've done some of the work for on this talk, that I need a wide gamut projector. Didn't think about that until yesterday when I wasn't sure how old this projector is. So hopefully you can see some cool colors, but if not, you can look at my computer later, and I can show you. But anyway, what's a gamut? So a gamut, as opposed to a color space, is a range of colors that are supported, or colors that are supported on a device. And it's usually displayed as shape, shapes within the human visual gamut. I'll have a picture of that on the next slide. And there's a couple different examples of gamuts that I'm going to touch on briefly. The first one is sRGB. And that's the gamut that most of us are familiar with because most CRT monitors and things from the 90s use RGB. And that's been, for uh, up until recently, the only option we've had with gamuts. But if you have a newer computer, especially if you have a Mac, like my Mac currently here, supports a different gamut called P3 or wide gamut. And basically what that means is it has a wider color range than sRGB. For the most part, you'll see that it supports a lot more vibrant colors and hopefully, again, I'll be able to show them on this projector. Did not think about that again. But again, we'll see. So those are gamuts. And this is a picture of the human visual gamut. And you can't see my picture. Fantastic. So. <laughs> there you go. Woo! Oh, good. Delayed. Good. That freaked me out a little bit. But this is what the human visual gamut looks like. It's this kind of weird triangle-y thing with a bunch of colors on it. And this is a view of all colors visible by the human eye. You might see that little tiny, there's a little triangle inside. I wish I had a pointer or whatever um, to show you where this little triangle is. But there's a little triangle within the visual gamut, and that is sRGB. That is the range that the sRGB gamut supports within the human visual gamut. So obviously it's not as big as the actual wide range of colors visible by the human eye. So this is what we've had to work with in that little triangle up until CSS Color Module 4, where we now have more um, support for other gamuts outside of sRGB. So you can see there's not a huge range of colors. It's very limited. You know, there's like a lot of really bright colors that you can see on the edges, but sRGB does not support those. And there are other color spaces that are within this human visual gamut. All of them will fit within this human visual gamut, but they're all just represented as triangles for the most part. Like P3 might be a, t a taller triangle that hits like the blues. That is supposed to be a brighter blue up there, but you can't really tell it's a brighter blue. 
but either way, different gamuts support different ranges of colors. <clears throat> and to contrast that, a color space is the arrangement of the colors within the gamut. And they're displayed in different shapes depending on the space. You can see I have two examples here. The top one is the RGB color space. It is usually represented as a cube with the red, green, and blue on all the sides of the cube. And then HSL, the one on the bottom, is usually, dis is usually uh, displayed as a cylinder with the saturation coming from the radius out, <coughs> lightness coming from the top down, and the hue is the color wheel circumference around the, um, the, the wheel that goes from zero to 360. So just an easier way to kind of visualize what these color spaces look like. And again, to summarize the difference between a gamut and a color space, the gamut is a collection of the colors, and the color space is the arrangement of colors within the gamut. And I think this will be the last time I say gamut because I'm going to be focusing on color spaces um, for the rest of the talk. <clears throat> so I'm going to touch on a couple current color spaces. You just saw a couple of them, and the other ones will probably also be things that you have worked with in the past. And they're all within the RGB color space because, again, this was the only color space that was supported up until CSS Color Module 4. So my next few examples will be these ones that hopefully you may or may not be familiar with. The first one, like, again, this is all the stuff I just said. Um, it consists of hex values, named colors, and it comes with a couple different functions like RGB, HSL, and there's an HWB function that's new within CSS Color Module 4. <clears throat> So this one, hex, is probably the one that you first learned to define color in CSS. You can see that you just do um, a hexadecimal value between 0 to F with the two, first two being R, first two, second two being green, and the, the third two being blue. And you can also written, write the shorthand, um, you know, if it's, if it's all zeros, like if you're defining black, you can just do 0, 0, 0. You don't have to do all six. Again, this is a basic overview of what hex is. There's other stuff you can do with hex, but basically this is what hex does. Next, there are named colors, and these are predefined keywords to represent these hex colors. And you might have done this before you learned hex because this one is easier to, to visualize. Um, you can see that I have a blue-violet. You just write blue-violet, and that maps to whatever that um, hex value is. And there's a whole list of named colors on MDN. Obviously, not every single hex value has a named color, and that's the big limitation of named colors and why you'd want to use something like hex if you want to fine-tune your, um, fine your colors a little bit more. <clears throat> Next up, not to be confused with the RGB color space, this is the RGB function, and this mixes red, green, and blue to make the different colors. I'm showing this, this again, this uh, screenshot of what the RGB color space looks like with the red, green, and blue. And up until color module four, the way to define this is doing RGB with, with the three values accepting a range from zero to 255 to represent each color in the space with the first one being red, the first, second one being green, and the third one being blue. And if you needed to add opacity, you'd have to use RGBA instead and pass the opacity last. This is going to change, this has changed slightly in CSS color module 4 and I'll go over that when I get to that section. <clears throat> Next one is HSL. This one's been around for a little bit too. This one I feel like is a little more intuitive than RGB because it's like, I don't know what, like I don't know what values of red, green, and blue I need to actually make the color I need. HSL, you can actually just follow the color wheel and see where the color is on the color wheel and then adjust the saturation and lightness. And HSL takes, and HSL stands for hue, saturation, and lightness, in case I didn't bring that up. And it takes, the first number is the hue, which is a, a degree from 0 to 360. And then saturation and lightness are both values from 0 to 100%, as you can see with the saturation and lightness coming from either the inside out or up and down. And similar to RGB, you can use HSLA to define the opacity. Again, this changes with color module four. And we'll start getting into color module four stuff now. I'm gonna get some water. 
I sang some karaoke yesterday, and my voice is a little raw. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so what's new in Color Module 4? This one is the biggest thing about Color Module 4 is that now you can support color spaces outside of RGB. The big, one, the big ones that I've mentioned here are, are CIE and Display P3. There are other ones too, but um, I'm going to focus on these two primarily. And there are a couple new color functions. Like I said earlier, there's HWB, and then there's Lab and OKLab, OK LCH and OKLCH, OK and then a generic color function that kind of catches all, it catches anything else. Another new thing is syntax updates for the color definitions. Um, before, like I said, with RGB, you had to separate all the values with commas. Now you can just write it straight without the commas. And you don't need to call RGBA anymore. You can just stick the opacity at the very end of RGB. And it's similar with HSL. You can do the same thing. So it's just HSL, 100%, or 100 degrees, 50-50, you know, whatever. <clears throat> and then there's a new, new named color, Rebecca Purple. Again, some of Color Module 4 has been out, been out for a while, and browser support for the new named color has been around for a while, but browser support for some of these other new color functions and things like that were rolling out slowly. And I believe most of these that I mentioned, the color functions, are, are supported in all browsers now. So you can use a lot of these today. All right. So this is the first of a new color function that's from Module 4. And this is another RGB color space. Um, this is another RGB color space function. Instead of hue, saturation, and lightness, this one uses <coughs> hue, whiteness, and blackness. And you can see there's a picture to visualize what the HWB space is. You can see the color wheel from 0 to 360, which has all the hues. And then there's the light, whiteness and the blackness that you can see within this triangle here where if you want it to be more black, you move it down to that part of the triangle. And if you want it to be white, you move it down to the bottom part of the triangle. And that's how you mix the color there. I haven't done anything with HWB yet because there's so many new color things that I haven't had time to do anything with this one. But I think this one makes a little more sense than HSL, and I think it looks pretty cool. <clears throat> and also, I'm going to talk about the color function which also kind of which also sticks within the RGB color space, which is why I stuck it here. So there's a lot of different functions for RGB, HSL, HWB. They decided to create a, a generic color function that you can just pass the parameters to. Again, this one only uses the red, green, and blue channels, and it uses decimals between zero and one to access these channels um, or percentages. And you can see the way you do this is you do color. And then you pass the color space in. And this one I'm doing display P3, which is a color space that's not sRGB. And then you pass what you want the red, green, and blue values to be. Now, I am curious to see what this is going to look like on this projector. So we'll see. So you can definitely tell they're two different colors, so that's good. Um, so I have a code pen here that is showing two different boxes. One of them is color defined in the P3 space, and the other one is, is defined using sRGB. And you can see, if I can make this bigger, I am using the color function for both of these on line, lines 14 here and 18 here. This one is display P3, and this one down here is sRGB. And you can see the P3 one is a lot brighter than the, than the sRGB one. And I can show you that the P3 space is outside of the sRGB color space if I go over to Safari here and show you a cool tool, cool tool that Safari has. If I can find the right thing. Uh, here it is. So I have this. Again, it's the same thing that you saw in um, Firefox. But if I go here and view the source here, um, I'm going to go click on this, my little color uh, selector in Safari, and you can see here, I'm not sure how visible this is, you can see that there's a line that goes uh, along the top and then down, so anything within on that side is sRGB. And you can see that my little blue dot up here is outside of that gamut, so that is, or outside of that color space, so you can see that the P3 space 
is using a color that's outside of sRGB. And this was not possible up until module level four. So now we have access to much more vibrant blues when you're using this color space. And you can see that this RGB one is actually still in the RGB space. I'll show you the same thing. That you can see that this right here, this is RGB, doesn't have as wide of a range of colors as the other one I showed you. So this is an advantage of using this, the color function and using P3 spaces. You're actually able to access a lot more colors and it's pretty neat. Go back to the slides. I have a question about that. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, that, uh, if you go back. Yeah, you want me to go back to Safari? Uh, yeah. Sure, that's fine. Yep. But the, your, your B value is over one, it's almost two. Yep. Uh, not an RGB. Uh, oh, the other one? Yeah, you can see it in the middle. Yeah, that's the 195. Yeah, 195. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, so is that because it's outside of... Yep. Uh, yeah. The color was, or the question was, um, the, the P3 blue channel I have set to 1.95, which is higher than 1. And um, it, it's higher than that because it is outside of the RGB, RGB color space. So it has more access to other colors. So yes. Second question. How yeah. does it fall back if you're not like on a Mac or an iPhone or an iPad or um, so the question is, what's the fallback? Yeah. And I don't know. That's something I probably <laughs> should have looked up. But there's ways you can actually do like an at supports rule or something yeah. like that. To I mean, see if, if you look at it on it. Windows or yeah. Android, you still have some sort of color. Right? Yep. Yeah, you'll have some sort of color. Um, but it might not be as bright. It might just go right to the edge of what the acceptable RG, range is. Closest RGB. Yeah. Yeah, but if you want if you want to fine tune it more, you can do a supports rule and say if it supports P3 color, you know, do this. There is a there is a media query for it, but I don't remember what it is off the top of my head. But there is a way to kind of detect what the color spaces you have access to on your machine. Yeah. How did they do the technical? How do they? It is. It is. Some, the question was how do they do the new color? How did they do these new colors? Um, I go over this a little bit in a future slide. It is lots of math that is really confusing, not confusing, lots of math that goes over my head that I don't know a lot about. So there are other people out, out there messing with colors, messing with a lot of like trigonometry and things like that to make the colors do what they do. I just am not that knowledgeable about that part. All right, back to this. And then, this is where I'm going to start getting into the mathy parts of the new color spaces, the CIE color space. This one has been around, the CIE color space has been around for a while, uh, but it's only been recently that it's been able to be accessible on the web. And these ones, what makes this color space different is that these are modeled after colors, how colors are perceived by the human eye. These colors are known as being perpetually uniform. And you can see this when you go to HSL. If you're changing an HSL by its lightness only, you'll see that the lightness isn't uniform across all the colors. And I have a code pen example that shows this. So if I click on it here, I didn't make this code pen. Um, they look, the blue looks like a lot darker than the yellow, so it doesn't look like it's very even. And the CIE color space is something that makes it more uniform across all colors, so one color doesn't look more jarring than the other, even though it has the same saturation and lightness in HSL. So that's an advantage of using these new color spaces. You can have everything be kind of more how your eyes actually work. And there's a couple of these, um, a couple of these new functions here. <clears throat> the first one is lab, and again, it's pen. I forget how long it's been around, but it's like in the world it's been around for a while, but on the web it's only been around for the last few years. And lab is, it, consi it consists of lightness and then two color channels that are A and B that don't really stand for anything. They're just a range from red to green and a range from blue to yellow. And it's written as lab. The first one is the lightness and the other two are like, if you go above, oh, yeah, if you go above zero, it's more red. You go below zero, it's more green. Third one, above zero is more yellow. Below zero is more blue. So something that is confusing about lab is this red, green, blue, yellow range is not very intuitive. 
So this one has been a little bit more hard, a little bit harder to visualize. <clears throat> so LCH was kind of uh, made to make this a little bit easier. Still using, still using the CIE color space, but it's written slightly different. It's using lightness, chroma, and hue instead. And when I say lightness, all these lightnesses are arranged from zero to 100. And, um, oh, I can't get back to the slides, whatever. Um, goes from zero to 100. Chroma is, it differs depending on what gamut you're in. And it's usually between zero and 0.5, but I've also seen it that it's only between zero and 0.37. Again, there's some math that goes into how these things are calculated where only certain chromas and hues are, or chromas are, and lightnesses are accessible by all these other hues. It's easier to visualize than lab because it's not just A and B. You can pass in a percentage, a decimal, and the, the color 0 to 360 hue. So there's some issues with LCH and, and lab. There's some issues with how the colors um, look, especially when you're going into blue. So in 2020, someone wrote this blog post, this uh, Bjorn wrote this um, blog post to fix some of the issues that they found in, in the lab color space. And you can see here, this person knows lots of math. There's some mathy stuff right here. It smoothed out the gradients, which is nice. So it looks more perpetually uniform. And again, more math. Um, so this, this is all the math that went through to make these colors a little more true to life. And the big reason to do this was because the blues in the lab example, in this lab example I'm gonna show, if I'm doing something that's supposed to go from blue to white, I don't expect there to be any purple in there because when I'm going from blue to white, it should just be from blue to white. But if I click on this, and open it in a browser that supports color interpolation, which I have right here. You can see here in this example that this gradient that I have that goes from blue to white with a color mix right here, you can see the lab gradient is going from blue and then there's a purple and then there's a white. And this is because there's some issues with the math in lab. These issues were fixed in OK Lab, and you can see that this one goes from blue to white. And that's how it should be. <clears throat> and then similarly to, to OK Lab, there's also OK LCH. And this one also fixes the blue hue shifts. This one's better because there is a color picker, and this can, I'll show you like how intense this color picker is, where it has the LCH, the um, lightness, chroma, and hue, and the opacity. And you can drag these around, and you can see all the different things changing. You can see if I move this all the way over here, this is missing. You can try drag this over, and the hue changes. So there's a lot of weird variations that go into some of these new color spaces. And this one actually does provide a fallback. You can see this, 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 uh, this tool. So if you're using something that doesn't support P3 or doing something that doesn't support this color space, then you at least have this, um, the fallback hacks value. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. What, what, why does it have the weird shapes? It has to do with the, the perpetual uniformity of um, the, the, the question was why is there weird shapes and stuff and why do these change? It has to do with the math and the perpetual uniformity of um, LCH and lab. Um, like not every like functions. Right? Yeah, yeah. There's like it's like trigonometry and there was a tangent I saw on this uh, this blog post up here. Signs, yeah, so yeah, lots of sine of h h three a tan two yeah. So lots of stuff that kind of calculates what things are available where, depending on what color, what, what hue, what, set, what lightness, what chroma. Again, lots of math that I tried to understand, but then was like, all right, this is a lot. I need, I need to spend a lot more time with that if I was really going to learn it. So those are the new, four new things that are in the, color, the CIE color space, and now I'll talk about a few new things that are in color module five. <clears throat> and this one mainly is a couple new functions that are cool to play with. Um, first one's the color mix function, which finally allows the ability to mix colors within a color space. Um, there's the relative color syntax, which gives you an easier way to manipulate colors if you need to update some of them inside of like an HSL definition. 
and there's a light dark function that it's a simpler way to change colors based on whether or not your computer has light or dark mode. I'm going to talk about that one at the end when I talk about ways to make to improve some accessibility of your site. So first, I'm going to talk about color mix. If anyone saw my talk last year about do you still need SAS in 2023, I went through this then. But it's giving you an ability to mix colors in CSS without SAS or custom properties with HSL. So you can see that you can mix this blue and white. You can mix in different color spaces. There's some weird issues with color mix in the OKLCH color space, and it is the weirdest thing ever. And it's not this one. It is this, this one. So this is a GitHub issue that demonstrates, demonstrates this OKLCH <coughs> issue with color mix. So you can see it's doing a color mix, make this bigger, the definition is a color mix in OKLCH mixing white and blue. So you would expect you would get like a light blue because that's what you want to mix. Nope. In Chrome, you get this color, which is like a pink. In Safari, you get this like mid green. It's supposed to be mint green, that's not showing here. And then down here, finally, you see the uh, Firefox, what it, what it looks like in here, which is what it should be. So there's some, and this is an issue that was opened and closed. I think there's other issues that are being worked on to fix this thing so that, that OKLCH is a little more consistent across browsers. But right now, I don't know if I want to use color mix with OKLCH. But I have an example of using color mix with, within sRGB. And that's what this is right here. So I have two examples here. The first one is default color. It's using HSL to lighten the color. Um, so the first definition is like a, is like a pink. And the, one, the second one is a lighter color being, lit, uh, being lightened through HSL. And I don't know what just happened there. <laughs> Why is that happening? <laughs> I, not such a thing. Either way. It still works. Yeah, it still works. You can still see. Well, you can't see the top. This, is... <laughs> this projector has a mind of its own today, apparently. It's interesting. Uh... What'd you do, Matthew? I'm like, I didn't step on anything down here. <laughs> Again? <laughs> it's just haunted today, I guess. <laughs> All right. I still have a question. What'd you say? SAS. Can you define that? Oh, define what, what, what SAS is? Yeah. Um, so SAS, like the, there was a ask, the question was, what is SAS? And it is a way to compile style sheets um, so that you can use things like uh, variable. They had variables. They had ways to mix colors. Like in SAS, they had a, a mix function that you could use to change colors. And then you would have to use a compiler to compile your SCS. You would write it in a .scss file for the most part. And this gave you more functionality within CSS that um, didn't exist within native CSS. So my talk last year was more about you don't need to use this, you don't need to use SAS anymore to compile your CSS down to um, add all this functionality that doesn't exist in SAS. But now there's a lot of things that do, in, do exist in, SAS, in native CSS. And mixing the colors like this is one of those things. I also talked about nest it, native nesting, and things like that too, which you used to have to use SAS to be able to get that within CSS. So, I have a question. Yeah. Is there an app so you can see with different browsers the colors, how the colors look in different browsers? Um, the question is, is there an app to show you what the different colors look like in different browsers? Um, for the most part, you're not going to run into that issue I showed earlier with color mix. That one was an issue with color mix in using OK, the OKLCH OK color space. My example here is sticking within the RGB color space, so there shouldn't be any issues between browsers with using color mix with that color space. So that's what these examples are. Um, and this one, what I'm doing in here is I'm setting the hue, the saturation, and the lightness as three separate variables within here. And then <coughs> down here, this first box is it just background color, HSL, with hue, saturation, and lightness. And then the lighter one, what I'm doing is HSL, and then calculating the lightness plus 25% to make this lighter in that way. So that's how you would have to, that's how you do it without color mix. Now within color mix, you define the background color to be the RGB, and that's what this example is here. 
And then with color mix, you just say color mix in, in the sRGB color space. You mix the RGB color. I could, I could have made this a variable. And then I want it to be 50% lighter. And so that's just a kind of shorter hand way of writing this color mix to be, or writing this color to be lighter than this one without having to set the three variables and all that stuff. So that just makes it slightly, slightly more concise. Oops. And next up, I'm going to talk about relative color syntax, but I'm going to go over a little bit. I'm just going to re reiterate what I was saying about updating colors using custom properties. You can see again in this example here, I'm, I had to set the three custom properties up here for hue, saturation, and lightness, and then to manipulate it, I had to update the lightness down here by calculating it and adding the 25% this way. So I had to go and create all these custom properties. And I'm not changing the other ones, I'm just changing one of them. But it was, pain, it was a pain to have to separate all these out into custom properties if I'm just up edit, editing one of them. So now with, and I just set all this here, but there is a better way to do this with something called relative color syntax. <clears throat> and this is new with color module five as well. And this one, again, you can do what you were doing with custom properties, usually within HSL, but now there's a better way to do it, more concise. It's supported in Chrome and Safari, but not Firefox yet, which kind of seems to be the case with a lot of new things. Got to wait around for Firefox, which is a bummer because I use Firefox. So the way you define the relative syntax is that you do, I'll just pop the example open. And I'll pop the example in not Firefox, so you can actually see what's going on. So I'm defining these two boxes. The first one is green, and I'm defining it right here in this relative syntax display here. And I'm saying the background color is HSL from the green channel of HSL or the green, the, green, uh, uh, the green hue on the color wheel, which I say down here is 120, but I just said green because it's the shorthand for 120 degrees on the color wheel. And then if I want to change the color of this, instead of having to have the three HSLs be separate variables, I can just go in here, and since I have H, S, and L separate, I just want to make, I want to make this a different color. So I'm going to add 200 degrees to this hue here, and it's going to be pink or purple instead. And so I didn't have to separate out, separate out the three variables. So I have the H, the S, and the L. I can manipulate all of them um, in any kind of way I want within here without having to create all the custom properties for that. So I think that will save a lot of time. It'll be pretty cool to play around with more once Firefox actually supports it, which hopefully will be soon. <clears throat> and then lastly, I'm going to talk about two color functions that help with accessibility. First one is light dark. And this one, again, is the one that you add styles according to whether you're using dark mode and light or light mode. This one is actually only supported in Firefox, which is pretty cool. And it's something you define in the root of your CSS file. You have to define the color scheme. Right now, I'm just going to use light dark. There are other color schemes, but I didn't really do a lot of research on that. I just wanted to show how you can use this with light and dark mode. And if you want to define, say, a text color, it'd be different depending if you're light or dark mode. You use this light dark function. First, the first value is the text color will be the color in light mode. The second one will be color in dark mode. And I can show this one. You see I've got two different boxes here. The first one is using prefer the prefers color scheme media query to to display it in dark mode or light mode. And the second one is using the light dark um, function. And you'll see that it does the same thing. You'll see that I'm defining the background color and the text color here. And then down here, the prefers color scheme dark. I'm just reversing the background color and the text color to have them be the opposite. And then to do the light dark, I have the color scheme light dark. And then I have the two light dark de definitions here to change the background color and the text color whenever it goes into dark mode. And I can show that if I go up here, go to my settings, go to my dark mode, go back to 
go back to here. And you can see here now that both of these are now using my defined um, dark mode styles. And the first one is prefers color scheme media query. The second one is light dark. So now you can, now that you're doing the same thing, light dark is just more simplified so you're not just redefining your um, custom properties whenever you're in dark mode. I'll turn back to light mode. And then I will talk about one more thing, and this is color contrast. This one is a very experimental feature. It's only supported behind a flag in Safari. And this is the one thing that's part of CSS Color Module 6. And this one takes a background color and then two text colors. And the text color will change depending on what has the most contrast within the background color. I don't know what that means, and I don't think anyone else does either, which is why this is experimental. It's using the WCAG 2.1 algorithm now, whatever that is, but it might change depending on what the definition of contrast is. You might be able to pass your own algorithm in to see if you use whatever other color contrast algorithms. But there is an example in CodePen that Dave Rupert um, uh, created, and you can see that right here. And you can drag around, you can drag around um, the hue, saturation, and lightness of the background of this, and the text of hello and world will change. And you can see that when I drag this this way and make the background darker or lighter, make it lighter, you can see that the hello changed to black, the world changed to be a blue. And if I make the background darker, it changes the, what, the text to white and the link to green. So that's something that's coming up. Hopefully we'll be able to use that sometime soon, but yeah, it's really exciting to see that up and coming. All right, now I'm wrapping up. I just said a lot of stuff and I started a little bit later, so hopefully I didn't like rip through these too fast. But there are a lot of new things happening of color in CSS today. There's a bunch of new color spaces and new color functions such as HWB, lab, and OKLCH. OK there are new functions such as color, color mix, and so much more. There are easier ways to manipulate color variations using relative color syntax. You just gotta have Firefox do it. And then there are functions to help with accessibility, like light, dark, and color contrast. And I've got a bunch of links. This is all linked up in case you want to read about anything having to do with color, including, um, I think I've got the W3 uh, specifications for four and five, and some other, uh, other articles about uh, manipulating color. That Chrome, the, the first link I have there, is really, really useful to learn more about, especially the CIE colors. Um, so, yeah, I would definitely check that out. Again, there's more information about me. <coughs> um, like, again, follow me on Mastodon if you really want to learn more. And that's it. Ta-da. Ta-da. Yeah. I don't know if I have any, do I have any uh, time for questions? Yeah. yeah, a few minutes. Okay. I'll take a couple questions if anyone has any. Yeah. Uh, the other browser you were showing off had some message about not supporting. Is that like a in-browser error message, or is that just something that somebody coded in there with a media player? Yeah. Yeah, this right that. here. So the question was, I'm show um, on Firefox. I have a code pen that's showing a message that says, "Sorry, your browser doesn't support color interpolation." This is something I wrote in here. Oh. Um, it is using su the supports query. Um, I can show you down here. I've got this. If the, if the browser supports the linear gradient in syntax, um, it'll show the two things that you see in like Firefox or in, in Safari. But since Firefox does not support it, I hide. I like I have this um, style up here. I have this div up here that shows this message, and I hide it when the browser supports it, and show it when it doesn't. So. Yeah, I use, it a, I use it in a couple places to kind of demonstrate that, hey, you can't use this thing yet, just so it's not like a white screen when you're seeing that. I hope that helps. Oh, so the, if it didn't support the color, it would be white? Yeah, if I didn't have this message in here at all, nothing would show up on the screen because Firefox doesn't know what to do with, uh, with this uh, linear gradient, okay. uh, background linear gradient in lab. It's like, I don't know what that is because I don't support it. Would that throw an error in the browser? Uh, let's find out. Yeah, I don't think it should. I can do... Just take your no support off that. Or... Yeah. Well, 
I've got three different divs in here. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. If I'm, if I'm, I'm hiding it here. Where do I have this? Sorry, wasn't expecting that question. So, Sorry. <laughs> looking around in here for how I did this. I did these a little while ago. Take up display mode. Yeah. This is. I mean, this is going to. I think this is gonna not do any. Oh, it's not gonna so do anything here. Right now, you're editing inside the media query that says if they support yeah. this. Yeah, I'm trying to find you the other stuff. You can change the support to be something that every browser supports, like Chuck yeah. supports on Flex or something. Yeah, um, I'll, have to, sure. I'll have to look around in here right now. I don't remember where I, I set all this stuff. Um, so I know I have another display none to hide these on this um, on the screen, but I can't remember where it is. I mean, it's kind of doing what it. It's not supporting. It's not show. It, it's only showing that your browser doesn't support the Fox because it's um, not support. That only doesn't show in other browsers. But the, the colors would be showing if there was if it was there. So no, I know. I'm just wondering. If, if like yeah, yeah. There's no browser. Or it just doesn't render anything. Basically. It, it wouldn't throw. Yeah. yeah. Here, this. If I get rid of this, you'll see. You'll see what happens. You'll see the two things of text that say lab gradient and OK lab gradient. But you're not seeing the actual gradient right, because the, the console. Yeah, there's no there's no like errors in the there, console to be inspected. No, it shouldn't. It shouldn't. There shouldn't be right, an error the in there. Yeah, yeah it's CSS. Yeah. If it was JavaScript, it would probably show like right, right. we don't know what this is, but not with this. All right. Do you have one more question? If anyone has one. Yeah. Has Apple developed a vision, an updated vision test? Uh, the question is: Has Apple updated an, uh, has Apple updated a vi or created one. created a vision test? I want to say maybe, but I don't know. I couldn't. I didn't find one when I was doing some research, but I would assume that one exists. But I'm not sure off the top of my head. All right, I think that's it. If anyone, I'm, I'm going to be at the after party, so if anyone has any questions of me there, if you're drinking a beer and want to talk about CSS, feel free to come on up and talk to me, and I can answer any questions you have. So thank you.